Hi guys, it's me Chazra HD and welcome to this video where me and Nib are going to analyse all the new aerodynamic parts that came from the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix on and there were plenty of new parts that came to plenty of the cars in Catalonia and in today's video we're going to analyse all of it in the next how many minutes or so this video goes and what I'm going to do is just hand over straight to Nib and get straight into it because there is so much to get into so Nib take it away and I assume you're going to start with Mercedes. Indeed we are going to start with Mercedes and first of all we're going to look at their new front wing this is the third iteration of their um, front wing so far this season it's quite a small little update for their front wing just the edges in towards the side of the neutral zone the front wing have been um, they are new parts as you can see on the image they're pointing the top part the top um, front wing there is the new front wing and you can see the comparison those leading edges are just a little bit more sharper trying to create a bit of a stronger vortex as then that vortex moves down towards the barge boards and creates of course more downforce they're moving on to this new um, mirror that they, they brought to the Spanish Grand Prix but didn't actually end up running in the Grand Prix because there wasn't too much of an aerodynamic benefit from it. But, of course, on the bottom image there, you can see the new front wing idea that they had. They might run it in Monaco. Of course, Williams tried a similar version of this early in the year, but it got banned. But Mercedes won was legal and they chose not to run it as it didn't have a good um, good enough aerodynamic benefit and then just a bit of an outer shot you can see how they've changed some of the mountings that hold up that little flap which then is connected to holding up the rear wing but um, they reverted back to that old system up on the top of the image for the race and then just a little bit of added detail to the barge board area as you can see on that outer barge board, they've added three little barge board things in front of the in front of the the other barge board there. So just creating more downforce, of course. That is what Mercedes are kings of at the moment. You can if you just have a look at their barge board area, I think Chaz will have a photo of it that I sent in uh, the DMs the other day. That Mercedes barge board area is so, just so so complex. And here we go, moving on to that image now. You can see that Mercedes have added on with their barge boards, which have boomerang wings hanging off of them, which is quite remarkable almost. And just terrific. Mercedes barge board area is absolutely terrific. And it's, a, it's a quite amazing to see how much it's changed from last season. Last season, it was made up with little small cuts and parts. But this year, they've chosen to go with much larger parts. And it certainly still is doing the job for them and getting them that downforce that they need to be able to go quick in the corners but then moving on to ferrari ferrari have brought a number of upgrades over the past couple of races especially baku there was a whole bunch of races but first of all we'll move on to ferrari's rear wing as you can see just an added extra cut in the rear wing um as we can see number seven place there just to add just to bring some extra rear downfalls which ferrari have been struggling with a little bit and of course those serrated edges down the bottom have been shortened and of course a little added slot and cut um, further forward on the rear wing and then ferrari brought a new engine cover for the spanish grand prix just trying to just trying to give their car as much space as possible and trying to maximize the effect that they have of that sort of shark fin i know it's not a proper shark fin or anything but just to give a um just to try and improve the performance of that and of course just try and tighten everything as tightly as they possibly can so i tightly package everything as tightly as they possibly can in the back of that ferrari and then there's a little image there of their front wing it's not too majorly important but they've just basically um with the end plate there they tried to give it more space so vortices can run off around this side of the tire but now moving on to Red Bull, a small little couple of updates for Red Bull in their barge board area. You can see there they've got a, now got a sort of an element underneath their original boomerang wing and some extra slots added into the barge board area. They're just above the original boomerang wing, just underneath the Aston Martin um, logo. 
and there's another better shot of it, as you can see there, quite clearly displaying how there's that second sort of boomerang wing or element underneath the original boomerang ring on the Red Bull. And then just a nice little shot of the of the T-Wing on the back of the Red Bull, of course, as the just tr anything to try and to get more downforce on the car. And a T-Wing certainly does help produce downforce for Red Bull and a bunch and a bunch of other teams. But now moving on to McLaren. Now, as you can see there, the bottom uh, front wing is the old front wing, but the one at the top is the new front wing. McLaren have ch almost changed designs of their front wing and gone more towards an Alfa Romeo or Ferrari version of the front wing, not quite as extreme, and it might look quite extreme because of this image and and how it and where the image is taken. But just trying to, obviously, they were finding they weren't having enough, getting enough downforce with that front wing that they have below. So they've gone for more of an outwash effect and they've also um, changed the sharpness of the of the elements on the neutral zone, zone of the front wing. That looks a lot better by McLaren in that sort of area. But it'll be interesting to see how that front wing design works out for them because it seemingly isn't exactly working out too smoothly and too well for Alfa Romeo and Ferrari at the moment. And as, as we're just about to see, we've got a close-up of the, how those serrated edges are just looking a bit more cleaner and sharper, creating more downforce, creating those vortices that you need to produce the downforce. Right now, moving on to the barge board area, as you can see, there's a, there's been a few little added, added details on top of that boomerang wing for, from the McLaren and also a couple of added little barge board um, carbon fiber pieces just at the edge of the floor, just just everything trying to perfect how those vortices are going to run through that area and try to create as much downforce as possible. And also on that outer outer barge board element, there's been also, you can see, been added development there with now a piece of carbon fiber. Actually, it's actually connected to that boomerang wing going down towards the floor. So a nice little upgrade there by McLaren in the barge board area. And here's a second shot to see that sort of development that they brought to the Spanish Grand Prix. A nice little development there by McLaren. And of course, at the start of the season, McLaren were running that weird little small shark fin, but now they've gone for a more of a traditional approach like every other team and have flattened that out and not just gone for the little small front wing. I'm um, sorry, shark fin. And it, that it just seems as if that wasn't exactly working for them. So they have changed to the more... Um, the more the, 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 the design that most teams run with on the field. And then with the rear wing, not too many upgrades on their rear wing, just a couple of nice cuts in the rear wing, just trying to create some more downforce at the back of the car. And that is where quite a lot of teams are struggling is rear downforce because the fr there's not a lot of downforce at the front of the car, but there is quite a lot of downforce at the rear of, car, rear of the car. So it's been really hard for the teams to balance that out. And a lot of teams have been struggling with that. But now moving on to... Okay, and moving on to Haas, you can see that they've um, realigned their little flap adjuster on the bottom front wing there. That is their new front wing that they've brought. And that, and that flap adjuster placement is just all trying to create that outwash effect which i talk so much about when the teams were launching their car so many teams have been going for that sort of design and just to try and help that outwash effect around the outside of the front tire of course it's not as, it's not really as hard to get create that outwash effect or as, or as needed because of course the front wings are a lot bigger than last year i think it's by 150 mil or something i can't remember the exact number but that just everything they can possibly do to create that outwash effect, and that is what the Rich Energy Haas F1 team have done there. But now moving on to the barge board area, quite a big development there by Haas. As you can see, they've got lots of little barge board pieces there. Of course, you can see on the top image how they had quite a big barge, um, looks like a three-element barge board concept there, but now they've cut it up into even more smaller pieces and that will just be creating even more vortexes and much more downforce than what they had before. And just on the floor, you can see a couple of nice cuts there just to try, try and create as much downforce 
as possible from the floor. And they and on the next image you can see some nice little um, some nice little smaller parts just um, a little bit further back in the barge board area. Very very mis reminded me a bit more of Mercedes is this house um, design of the barge board area. It's more from last year how there was a lots of little cuts and lots of little aero pieces as well as most teams have offered to go for large barge board area pieces this year but Haas have kind of stayed away from that and gone for much smaller pieces. And in Spain, it certainly did the job for them. But now moving on to Renault, they've brought a new sort of front wing, just changing how it lays out on the bottom element of their front wing and to see how much closer it gets to the ground. And that's that's a couple of things that um, a couple of teams have been struggling with, however. Ferrari in, in the in the test after Barcelona were running um, ground measurements all along their front wing to see whether or not their front wing is getting down close enough to the ground in every single corner. So just this is something that teams will be working on all throughout the season to improve, to get their front wing as as down to the ground as they possibly can, just so that they can produce as much downforce as possible. And as we know, Ferrari really have been struggling with that. And then this little couple of updates for Renault in the barge board area as you can see they've got all those nice cut slots in the on the leading edge of the floor and the front and the barge board area there but that main barge board with the Microsoft there wasn't many cuts in that before creating those vortices but now there is a couple of cuts in that in that barge board piece there just creating as much downforce as possible and Renault do seemingly have a relatively good aerodynamic car from all the data, they're probably the fifth fastest car through in the corners. So if they need to improve on that, they sure do. But a, a step in the right direction for the French outfit. Now moving on to Racing Point. Just a couple of little added slots, it looks like, uh, along the Boomerang wing. Just a nice cut little update there for the Racing Point outfit. I am aware that there are more Racing Point updates, but I don't have the images um, here and that some of them weren't exactly landscape so we could not use them for this video but now on to our last team Alfa Romeo if they have brought a new rear wing as a, and you can see there on the bottom one that is the one that is being used is certainly in Barcelona just on the top element of the rear wing just creating a little bit more of a of a curve in and then up just to try and create as much downforce as possible to then spin down the back of the rear wing and down towards the diffuser. A nice little development there by Alfa Romeo. But that is going to be it for our tech update. There hasn't we it's very hard to go through back every single image and then say, oh, there's been an update there, oh, there's been an update there. It's extremely, extremely difficult to do. So I'm sure there are more updates that we that we haven't quite seen. I know there are some from Red Bull, from Racing Point, and of course. We've just completely cut out Williams because they they don't really matter, although there were some nice little pieces on their car. But it's extremely hard to get all of the image and then realize, oh, they've updated and brought an update there. So thank you so much, guys, um, for listening to this video and watching this video. It's very hard to do these sort of videos, and I'm sure that throughout the rest of the season we'll bring some more tech update videos for you guys but now i'll throw it back to chazza yep thank you very much to nib there for doing that analysis of all the new parts on the cars as nib said we are probably going to do this again sometime later in the year maybe at the earliest i don't know around hockenheim but most likely around spa after the summer break will we do another tech analysis video but thanks again to nib for coming along and offering his insight to all the new parts on the cars Guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, as again, we will do this again sometime during 2019. Don't forget to like this video and comment down below what you thought of this video and what parts, new parts of the cars, did you notice that we did not. And until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.